What's going on guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. Today we're going to be reacting to the perfect train car the U.S. doesn't use. Sometime in the last couple weeks I reacted to a video that took place in the London Tube. And in that video I noticed that people that were inside of the train could walk from train car to train car to train car without having to open a door. It was like each end of a train car was open so you could basically walk all the way from one end of the train to the opposite end of the train without having to open a door to get to the next train car. I'd never seen a train like this that I know of. Um, you know, I've been on the New York City subway a number of times, it's been a long time, but um, you know, go back 10 years or so when I used to go up there and visit friends quite often. So I'd get on the subway, you know, every once in a while. So, and it was always just a train car hooked to another train car and you had to actually open a door to get into the next train car. And the same thing for when I've been on above ground trains, um, you know, traveling across the country different, through different states and whatnot. Um, I used to drive, uh, travel down to Florida quite often on train, and um, and I always had to just open a open the door inside of the train car to walk across to get to the other train car. And I have been on trains in Southeast Asia. For example, Bangkok has a very good. Uh, it's kind of like an above uh, above rail system. It goes above the city, and um, and I don't remember the trains looking like the train I was seeing in the London Tube there in that video. So I, I can't remember exactly what the Bangkok trains look like, but I don't remember them being like this. So, anyways, I thought that was a very interesting uh, train, and someone in the comments of that video recommended that I check out this video, and. So I'm really excited to kind of learn how that works. From what I understand, somehow when the train stops, it basically, uh, it looks like there's an, an accordion almost there. Like it's really interesting and it opens the doors or the ends of each train car or something. And then I guess when it takes off, it somehow closes. I'm not really sure uh, exactly how that works, but I guess that's what this video is going to show us, and I'm very interested interested to uh, check it out. So let's just go ahead and learn uh, about the perfect train car that the U.S. doesn't use. Ever load into a crowded subway car only to instantly regret it because now you find your face buried into someone's <coughs> armpit? Mm. If you have, you might think to yourself, there's got to be another way to do this. And it turns out there is. There's a design that's been proven to solve overcrowding, but we kind of ignore it. Passenger trains have come a long way. They first got their start with miners hitching rides in coal cars on their way to work. But the first passenger rail carriages were introduced in the early 1800s, and they were very uncomfortable, impractical, oh, I bet. and sometimes even dangerous. Passengers rode both inside the coach and on benches mounted onto the top of the coach. By 1834, mounted carriages were replaced by rectangular rail cars. They featured simple wooden benches and had a center aisle, similar to what we had. Did I say 1834? I think he did. Wow, that's earlier than I expected. Have today. And for the most part, train cars were self-contained, meaning that going from car to car was hard and not permitted. Look at cities like Chicago, New York, and Boston, and you'll find commuters jam-packed into train cars. Some commuter or long-distance rail cars are wider and less crowded, but subways are constricted by their tunnels and are often narrow. There are only so many seating configurations that you can give people. There's bench seating along the wall, and then periodically, uh, two pairs of opposing seats will stick out at a 90-degree angle. But the most efficient arrangement, and which is what they've gone back to today uniformly, is bench seating along either wall. And you had that from the very beginning. Essentially, train cars haven't changed much in over 100 years, even though this exists. Yeah, this definitely looks, wait, oh, here it is. Yeah, that's exactly what I was seeing here. That's such much, that's so much better, man, because if, you know, there's always going to be the train cars that more people are getting on, and then there's going to be train cars that less people are getting on. And if you have the ability to walk through, you can go and find one of the cars that are less crowded. Just is so ingenious. <laughs> um, why don't they have this in America? 
But yeah, this right here, the, the bench seating on the sides is so much better because then at least instead of it coming out this way, this it gives so much more room here for people to stand and hold on to a bar. This is an open gangway car. Open gangway. Gangways are narrow walkways or platforms that provide access between two points. Yeah, this is exactly what I'm used to seeing when I rode on a train. Uh, you know, if you... Like, I rode on the Amtrak a number of times to Florida and whatnot, and, uh, you know, if you want to go on a different train, you just open the door, and you, you're you kind of outside, and you walk across this little ledge or this little whatever this is right here. Hmm. In this case, two train cars. Have you ever seen an articulated bus? No. You know that black accordion section in the middle? That's what we're talking well, about. Well, actually, I think I have seen this, but... Yeah, I think I have seen it, but not in person. I don't think I've ever... Have I? To be honest, like I haven't lived in areas that have that good of public transportation. Um, I don't even think we have like public buses or anything around here. I don't think we have any. And we don't really have any like public transportation at all. You can get Uber or something, but like that's not really public transportation. But um, what? I wonder what the reason for this would be on a bus because... I guess it just makes an extremely long bus. I, I don't know. The enclosed space between cars allows riders to safely spread out between crowded and uncrowded cars, increasing the train's capacity without adding any length. Replacing the unused space of traditional train cars with open gangway cars can represent up to a 14% reduction in crowding, which is what makes open gangways so appealing. London already operates open gangway trains on its subsurface lines, and they found the design could increase the capacity of its deep tube by as much as 10%. London Wait, I just realized something. I thought this only, these, I thought basically these, these cars, these train cars, I thought they only opened up once the train was stopped. So this, it looks like that continuously. Oh man, that, that's really, that's a really good design. Okay. Then it's also replacing its 1970s train on the Piccadilly line with open gangway trains, which should be completed by 2025. This makes total sense. It basically, it's, it's basically the, the same thing you already have on a train. It's just, it's the gangway. It's what they call it, I guess. I didn't know that's what you called it, but but basically they just put this accordion-like material here that kind of moves and sway, sways with the train. This is ingenious. I never knew this existed, though. Okay, it makes a lot of sense now. It's, it's the same thing you have on one of those trains where you had to open the door, except basically they've made it enclosed. And so it's easier to walk through, and they can, I guess it stays air-conditioned or whatever, um, instead of it having to have a door and all this, that's, that's awesome. It's much easier to walk from car to car. That's, that's awesome. New York City is adding open gangway cars, even if it's at a snail's pace. In 2018, the MTA approved the purchase of 535 R211 train cars from Cowboy. 535? Cars, including 20 wow. trains featuring the open gangway design. And it's good timing. New York City's subway ridership is increasing as we come out of the pandemic, reaching 3.7 million trips a day, up 35% from last year. Prior to the pandemic, ridership was hovering around 5.5 million trips per day, so we'll need all the space we can get. So why don't we see more open gangway trains in the U.S.? It's estimated that at least three quarters of metro systems outside of the U.S. use at least some form of open gangway train cars. Wow. These trains can be taken for a spin in older systems in Paris and London, as well as through newer networks in China, Algeria, and Egypt. They're clearly the train car of the future. That's at least what the world is suggesting by their implementation. But I guess America didn't get the message. While we don't have a fleet of open gangway train cars in the US yet, they may be right around the corner. Cities like New York and San Francisco are currently testing these train cars out. So while we don't have them yet, we may see these trains popping up sooner than we thought. I don't know why America wouldn't. There doesn't really seem to be a downside. Please, 
If you know of any downsides to these, uh, the gangway uh, car, train cars, please let me know because to me, they seem like it'd be all positive with no negative. And I think they should probably, uh, I understand they wouldn't just go ahead and up, replace all the cars, at, the train cars at once in, in these cities that uh, operate these subways and whatnot. But you would think they should from now on when they, um, when they have to replace trains as they get too old, they should go ahead and uh, go to the new gangway cars. It just makes sense. I mean, I didn't know these existed, but they totally, I mean, it just makes total sense. I mean, I don't, there's not much to say except that. <laughs> um, I would definitely prefer to be on a train like that, knowing that if I got on a crowded car, I could easily just walk to another car and maybe find a, a better seating, a seat or something like that. Uh, what do you say? It just makes sense. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys. Peace.